This video is sponsored by Shortform but more about them later in the video. Every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I drag myself out of bed to start one of the Study with Tina live streams, which has been going on for the past year now. I also read every night, and also when I have some free time in the afternoons. You see, some people call this hustle culture, but I disagree. I argue that it's actually extremely important to keep self-studying and educating yourself, especially in today's rapidly changing landscape. Hey, not gonna lie though, me personally, I definitely have taken this too far and I have burnt out several times, especially in December last year. But from this, I really learned my lesson and I've learned to scope down to what is sustainable and manageable for myself. In this video, I'm gonna share with you guys the five big reasons why I keep self-studying, despite having what is known as a good job as a data scientist in tech. The first reason for why I continue to self-study is to have things in my own hand. So what do I mean by this? What the pandemic has taught me is how woefully unprepared the government and society as a whole is. When COVID happened and pretty much everybody was just like freaking out and it took months and months to even come up with a strategy for what to do. The layoffs that happened and just in case you didn't know, even in tech, which is considered to be one of the most lucrative and safe places to be in terms of a career, it's definitely one of the least effective industries, but it was affected as well. I mean, I personally knew friends who were laid off from their positions as software engineers and data scientists in tech, not to mention the huge pressure on essential workers, which is still happening even now. For example, this short over here. Well, we used to step outside to cry, but we're short staff now, so we just openly weep while continuing to practice critical care medicine. It's very funny, but you know, it's like how people cope with by making memes. So after realizing how fragile everything really is, I started digging more into facts. Like for example, this article, which I'll link below about the social security trust funds in the US. The title says, social security trust funds now projected to run out of money sooner than expected due to COVID, Treasury says. The finances of both programs, which they mean the two social security funds, the old age and survival insurance and the disability insurance trust funds have been significantly affected by the pandemic and the recession of 2020. The Treasury Department said in materials released Tuesday. The combined effects of a dive in employment, interest rates, earnings, and GDP, as well as a higher mortality for the next few years, all significantly impact the outlook of the programs. Another stat over here. The annual inflation rate in the US likely accelerated to 7% in the last month of 2021, a fresh high since June of 1982. And there's unemployment rates that do show a recovery, but if you really dig into the minority details, you'll find that things are still suffering a lot. I'll link more articles in the description. And I like always say, I'm just some random person on the internet. So please, please, please do your own research. But what this says to me, at least, is that really, really, really gone are the days in which you can trust a company or your government to take care of you. And this is why I think it's so important to keep educating yourself and self-studying at the minimum about your own personal finances and your retirement. And at least on your radar should be the idea of upskilling if, even if you do have a job right now, just in case the unthinkable does happen, right? So I argue that this is not hustle culture. This is reality. That was all gloom and doom. But let's go to the second reason, which I promise is more optimistic about why it is I keep self-studying. And that's my ultimate personal plan of achieving financial freedom, location freedom, time freedom, and ultimately intellectual freedom, which is what I define as being able to do what I find the most meaningful anytime that I want. So I want to share with you guys my vision for my ideal day. I want to wake up at around 7.30 a.m. naturally, and this might be in the mountains, at the beach. I want to be able to experience a variety of different environments throughout my life. I'll then read for a bit and then go biking, where I'll think about whatever venture it is that I'm currently pursuing. For example, the YouTube video that I'm going to be making next. Or after reading, I would do a study with Tina live stream in which I'll self-study whatever it is that interests me at that time. And then I'll go biking, and then afterwards I will have lunch. And for the rest of the afternoon, I'll answer emails, do some admin tasks, and pretty much wrap everything up by dinner time. In order to have that ideal day, I need to not be worrying about whether I'm going to be fired and whether the thing that I'm pursuing is going to make enough money for me to put food on a table and like a house over my head. Ideally, I also want 20% or more of my income to be passive. So that really frees up my mind and just, you know, makes me feel a lot better to pursue the things that I want to pursue. And the second component of location freedom, I want to be living, I don't know, by the lake, in a beach, on the mountains. And I think the way that I'll achieve this is doing all the things that I work on online. And it also gives me the freedom to move to a place that has a lower cost of living so that the money that I make online can be spread a lot further. Spread? Stretched. 
a lot further. Next, time freedom. I want to be able to wake up on rush, not like super nervous or rushed because of some meeting that I have. I also generally work the best before the afternoon, so I really want to have that freedom of allocating that period of time that requires like mind brain intensive activities and then putting meetings in the afternoon and i also want my mornings to be uninterrupted when i'm doing the biking the thinking and the reading my time is the most valuable resource that i have and i want that to be in my own hands and finally the things that i'm working on that's intellectual freedom i want to be working on whatever i think it is the most meaningful and fulfilling at that time which it can only be achieved if i have that financial freedom location freedom and time freedom first so yep this is another huge reason i keep self-studying because I really think that's the key for me to build and work towards that ideal vision for myself because this is a non-traditional path. So of course the pandemic was a very, very unfortunate thing and has negatively impacted a lot of people. However, I would say that there is at least two silver linings though that I see. The first one is remote work becoming so much more prevalent now. And I think this is such a big opportunity because no longer do you need to have a job where the expectation is that you show up to that job, possibly have a really long commute time and just work for that paycheck for that single employer. Now there's so many more chances to build multiple streams of income online and also taking on different freelance jobs that are all online and remote as well. And the second silver lining of the pandemic, it's the fact that because of all the closures that happen, there was a huge influx of interest as well as investment into online learning, both like in the formal education space, like universities and, and high schools, as well as online courses in general. More and more people like content creators or like business leaders have flocked to producing more content, sometimes for free or really cheap prices, considering how much value that you're getting um, for all that insight and knowledge. I think it's just a pity if you don't take advantage of this democratization of knowledge. And I think it's really helped me and will continue to help me build out that vision for myself. Third reason why I keep self-studying. It's because the world is really changing and I want to be well-educated about these changes. And the new tech that's really bringing about this change is Web3, blockchain, decentralized finance, including cryptocurrencies and NFTs. Granted, I'm not old enough to remember what it was like uh, when the internet first started, but I guess like one of the benefits of working in Silicon Valley is that you have uh, access to people who were around during that time and who have taken advantage of the internet boom. Well, all of these people are saying that they think the changes that are happening right now, that pattern is very similar to what it was like when the internet first started. For example, more and more, this idea of the blockchain is really becoming mainstream. It's like it's no longer in the fringe. There's governments that are adopting it, banks that are adopting it, a lot of money from tech companies that are poured into it as well. Like YouTube's public statement recently talking about what they're going to be focusing on. They explicitly mention the idea of blockchain and their investment into NFTs and also Meta, which announced that there's huge investment and they're building around NFTs as well as Web3. In my opinion, this is the future and I want to be well educated, understand what's happening when things exponentially start changing, just like it did when the internet first came about. And hey, maybe you don't believe me and that's fine. Like, I am not here to change your mind and like, hashtag not financial advice i'm just a random person on the internet but in my humble opinion even if you don't believe all this is happening i think it's still prudent to be well educated in that manner so you can actually say i am well educated and i don't think this is real you know what I mean? Fourth reason why I continue to self-study is that self-studying is my keystone habit, which a keystone habit is defined as a habit that if sustained will have a rippling positive effects throughout your life. I also talk about it in this video, which I'll link over here. But yes, for me, it is self-studying and specifically the study with Tina live streams. It's taught me discipline so I don't become one with my bed. I know I can attribute to self-studying because when I went to Mexico for a week and I stopped doing the live streams, I immediately went back to my unfortunate state. Self-studying has also opened a lot of doors and opportunities for me. It's helped me learn about how businesses work, how personal finance works. It's also how I keep learning things so I can produce YouTube videos like these. And of course, it's also helped me work towards that vision that I described earlier. And fifth reason for why I keep self-studying is that, in my opinion, it is the key to leading a fulfilling life. My favorite genre of books are psychology and kind of what I call like pseudo philosophy because I don't have enough brain cells to like actually read you know like hardcore philosophy. I feel like I've learned so much from books like Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl where it's really helped me understand what is a happy and fulfilling life. Also really like channels like Sisyphus 55, Pursuit of Wonder, all YouTube channels which I will link below where it's kind of like philosophy and with pictures which 
is a lot easier for me to understand. But it's really helped me understand about these questions that philosophers in the like past millennium and more have been thinking about. And also Anne Rand, I know she's a super controversial figure and I do not agree with many, most of her political and uh, just beliefs in general. But for me, she really gave me that first aha moment. Man's meaning is to learn and to create. And that is like the path towards leading a fulfilling life. So I really internalize this and this is why I keep self-studying, I keep making video YouTube videos and just talking about the things that I learn. So learning and creating. And I don't have any like proper proof for this, but I do feel so much more fulfilled now than I did previously. I do have that leap of faith that this is what's going to lead towards me leading a very fulfilling life. Again, you can absolutely disagree with the conclusions that I've drawn from reading these books and just learning things and self-studying. But again, I would say it's prudent for you to educate yourself and just come to draw your own conclusions for what makes your life fulfilling. Now let's talk a little bit about our sponsor for today, which is Shortform. And Shortform has over time become increasingly more integral to my whole like self-learning journey. Shortform produces nonfiction book guides that are so much more than book summaries. They're super detailed, have interactive exercises to apply the ideas you learn and includes their own insights and actually links these concepts to other books and other concepts, which overall helps you gain a deeper understanding of the ideas of the book. They also cover a variety of different genres, including my favorites of psychology, pseudo philosophy, as well as like philosophy, um, if you have more brain cells than me, and business. When I was reading the book Man's Search for Meaning, that specific book guide from short form really helped me internalize some of the concepts in the book that I found kind of difficult to grasp in the beginning. For example, that quote, it is not man who asked for life's meaning, but rather must recognize that it is he who is asked. This was super abstract to me and just reading short forms guys that kind of helped me understand more about exactly what that means. Shortform drops new book guides as well as articles every single week. And subscribers can vote for what books to cover next. To get five days of unlimited access as well as 20% off the annual subscription, join Shortform through this link over here as well as linked in descriptions. Okay, that is all I have for you today. I will see you guys in the next video or live stream.